What's good YouTube, Chase Vickers back with another reaction video. Today we're here with the Jordan Rules Explained. How Michael Jordan was defended by the Pistons. This was a request from somebody down below in the comments below. I don't know if this if it was this exact video because they just told me to react to the Jordan Rules. Which, I know the Jordan Rules were like this right here. How Michael Jordan was defended by the Pistons. And it was like only the Pistons. To the best... So what I know, it was only the Pistons. So if it wasn't only the Pistons, go ahead and let me know in the comments. But like I said, this was a request from somebody. So if y'all want me to react to anything, go ahead and put it in the comments below. And while down there, subscribe and notification, about the like button. And this minute, I mean, this video is six minutes and thirteen seconds. So let's get it started. And yeah, like I said, this was not the video they requested. So if this was the wrong video, please let me know. But um, this was the best video that I could find. Hey sports fans, Coach Nick here. Welcome to B-Ball Breakdown. Happy 4th of July to all of our American friends. And today I wanted to go over the Jordan rules, the concepts on defense the Pistons created to defend the single most devastating wing scorer we've ever seen in the NBA in Michael Jordan. They figured if they can stop him, the other teammates on the Bulls wouldn't beat them and they would win those series. And it proved true for most of the time until the Bulls finally broke through. That said, there are some concepts I'm going to show you that they definitely employed using the 1989 Game 6 Eastern Conference Finals where the Pistons okay. were able to beat the Bulls in six. Let's give you some context. Uh, Doug Collins was still coaching the Bulls. Phil Jackson was on the bench but hadn't taken over yet. Scottie okay. Pippen gets injured in the very first minute of the game and is unable to help them. It would have made a big difference. Mm. And Michael Jordan had a groin injury he was battling as well. Wow. Now let's not also forget that Doug Collins had Michael Jordan initiating the offense from the point guard position for much of this season, and Michael put in, I think, 10 or 11 straight triple doubles during this year, but it also served to wear him out, as we'll see in this game. Let's start 10 with the straight post triple doubles? It's clear their rule was to double team immediately, and Bill Lane Beer was their designated doubler, mm -hmm. and that meant whomever he was guarding stayed near their free throw line to get the pass out. Brad Sellers gets into the lane for the runner. This time it's Cartwright who unleashes his tornado of a shot. And in the fourth, it's a triple team as Isaiah Thomas mistakenly doubles one pass away off of John Paxson. And to show you just how good Michael was on these two post-ups, the double team didn't even matter slow. one bit. Right over The Pistons would also show Michael a quick double with a big man if he was bringing mm -hmm. the ball up the court, something he did more than any other guard in the Bulls in 1989. Mm -hmm. The idea was to get it out of his hands quickly. Without Scotty out there, he was left to feed the ball to non-threats like Dave Corzine and Brad Sellers. Here's Mahorn again stunting at him, and you can see the mm -hmm. entire defense's attention shift to Michael, opening up shots for teammates. The quick double was relatively effective getting it out of his hands, and here's an example where they didn't do that, and Michael just destroys Joe Dumars and Bill Lambeer with a crossover. <laughs> On this early he's seen, double, he seen he was getting guarded by one person. He said, "Get out the way." <laughs> Michael doesn't get rid of the ball, but you can start to see evidence where it was wearing him down, perhaps as his groin injury got worse. Mm-hmm. The Pistons also like to double Michael off of the cutter, and normally if the ball is on the wing, it should be a layup. But the offensive spacing wasn't always perfect, as Charles Davis should have been spread to the weak side corner. As a result, Lane Beer can rotate easily to stop the pass for a layup, mm -hmm. and all they had was a rush shot as the shot clock expired. The Bulls were prepared for the double off of the cutter as they set a flare screen for Sellers after he cut through. This forced Isaiah to run. I'm also potato. learning some stuff here too. I'm not just watching how they guard him. I'm learning some stuff. I'm here. Dodge is <laughs> wide open and he killed them repeatedly in the first <laughs> half. With Scottie Pippen out of the game so early, the Pistons repeatedly left Brad Sellers wide open to use his man to double team Michael Jordan. And while he didn't have a terrible game, they needed Sellers to be much better on these field goal attempts. Mm -hmm. The Pistons also made the decision yep. to help one pass away with a guard when Michael attacked from the wing off the dribble. Mm -hmm. This ended up being effective. They had like a completely different playbook or whatever you want to call it from Michael Jordan. They had one, okay, this is regular, and then boom, 
strictly Michael Jordan written all over it. <laughs> out of Michael's hands, but his teammates did a nice job making the Pistons pay. However, Detroit was playing the long game here, hoping to eventually wear Michael out. Another weakness in the Pistons' defense was the pick and roll when Lane Beer was guarding the screener. He simply wasn't mobile enough to cause Michael problems, he's not getting over. and the screen itself was able to get Dumars out of position enough for Michael to attack and do his magic. It will spin. Mm -mm. Another it part of the Jordan rules was simply to gang oh, up on him cross. as he attacked the lane. Routinely, mm -hmm. if he got penetration, they'd have three guys come over to stop him, willing to give up passes to his teammates, and this also served to wear him down by the end of the game. Mm -hmm. All of these methods might have given the Bulls hope early, but you can see by these plays that Michael started to tire and having to battle his groin injury with no Scottie Pippen to help proved too much of an uphill battle. But let's not ignore that Joe Dumars was the best wing defender of his era and could be very effective on Jordan all on his own. The Pistons were able to get up that. key stops down the stretch to pull out this series and the Bulls were left pondering what steps they needed to take to eventually overcome mm. the Detroit Pistons. So there you have it, sports fans. The next year, wow. Phil Jackson took over, slowly put the triangle offense in, and the rest, as we can say, is... I know history. the triangle offense. What was curious to me in this game was why they didn't post up Michael Moore, because he was virtually deadly down there. They were getting great shots. Mm -hmm. And why they didn't run more pick and roll with Lane Beer guarding the screener. Those are the kind of things that maybe Jerry Krause and Jerry Reinsworth were scratching their head about and led to the change to bring Phil Jackson in. Well, thanks for joining us. Have a mm. great 4th of July week. Mm. Okay. That, like, gave me a whole different, you know, because the only thing I knew about the Jordan rules were if he jumped in the air, kill him. That's what I was told that they were. Every time MJ got in the lane and he went up to dunk the ball or lay the ball up or go for a floater, kill him. That is what I learned. Kill him. That's what I was told the Jordan rules were. Do not let him, you know, <laughs> but this was like a whole different side of them. This was the actual, how they were playing them in like, you know, y'all seen it. But uh, let me know what y'all thought of the video down below in the comments below. I don't know other videos that y'all want me to react to. Also hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell, hit the like button. And with that being said, stay cool, stay safe. I love y'all.